Today's guest is Nadine Artemis, and we're talking all about healthy skincare today. She's the creator of Living Libations, and she's the author of Renegade Beauty and also Holistic Dental Care, the complete guide to healthy teeth and gums. So we'll get to that towards the end. Um, Such an awesome conversation on one, why you don't need all the chemical crap that's in beauty products, two, what you do need to know about the the power of natural products and your beauty products. And we'll get all into that just to give you some background on Nadine. She opened North America's first full concept aromatherapy store osmosis in 1994. Um, she's been featured in many publications, including Vogue and New York times. And yeah, she's just a beautiful soul. Um, this has been something that she's been into since she was a child and it's just definitely been her, her purpose, her passion. And you'll see as we go through the episode. So I hope you guys learn a lot. Here is Nadine Artemis. All right, Nadine, I was telling you that, you know, this podcast is called Inside Out Health, which I'm all about. And I love that you're bringing that kind of perspective to the beauty industry of like real beauty, nature, beauty, you know, like, um, and, and in terms of like making that healthy for people, right? So you've created living libations. They're all, it's all organic, wild crafted, non-GMO serums, you know, essential oils, all of that. I was wondering before we get into your philosophy, like what, what happened to cause you to go this direction in your career? Yeah. Well, wasn't that really that radical of a thing, except just this, like, it all makes sense to me though. You know, like I, I got to spend a lot of childhood in nature Mm. and really, you know, and as an adult, I was like, that actually was just so such an imprint Mm. and, you know, just even, and again, I did like to mix things and concoct things where there's like crushing geranium petals into mud. So I was doing all that mm-hmm. inside the home. I was also mixing and concocting. Then, um, you know, grade nine, I got to do this science fair project and I chose to uh, do perfumery. So that was really fascinating because back mm-hmm. in the eighties, like everything was synthetic, but I found uh, this book that talked about the history and the mystery of perfumes and how the plants were distilled. And that just really, struck a chord with me and -hmm. the book talked about distilling the plants and that these things are called essential oils and you could probably find them at your health food store so we drove Mm -hmm. to the big city went to the health food store and then that's where i'm getting a first whiff of things like jasmine or orange that is just really you know striking my olfactory bulb in a different way back in the sunscape of the 80s i didn't have the language to really understand the true difference between naturals and synthetics but there i was like smelling it and it was informing me um, you know, then I'm just in my teens, like, you know, bath, bottle, bathroom full of bottles and mixing and doing all kinds of fun awesome. stuff. But again, just mixing things that were already like a thing. Um, so then I get to university. I'm like skipping school, watching like a talk show. And they're talking about like, you know, food and food production and how it's actually hooked up to the environment and like water supply and pesticides. And that was pretty revolutionary. Then it was like about 1990. And um, Lisa Benet was on and she's just talking about the connection with dairy. And just that was just that like food had that kind of impact on the health. And then I also happened to walk by this little health food store every day at university. It's like in a little converted house. And like I mm-hmm. bought, you know, it's called greens and beans and things. But there was a it. great, you know, book selection. I was totally digging into that. And there was like books from like naturopaths from Europe. They were a little bit older, but it was really just giving clues as to how we can take care of the body that was very different from, you know, grab the Pepto-Bismo and aspirin right. kind of situation. And just seeing like, you know, things like skin conditions like acne or eczema or varicose veins and how they're related to, you know, circulation, lymphatics, like mm-hmm. all this sort of stuff. So I started to understand, you know, how to how to deal with the body differently, how to understand it differently. Mm -hmm. And really that there was just so many solutions for the the kind of day-to-day stuff, body stuff that can kind of weigh on us. It's not necessarily a medical emergency, but like, you know, headaches, stomachs, constipation, acne. And that was all making so much sense to me. Then I was learning about reading labels at the food market and just really seeing you know, mm-hmm. that there's kind of five food companies and all the games that are played with labeling. And so then mm-hmm. it just didn't take me much to to look at the stuff in my bathroom and to finally kind of get a cr- understanding what all those big words were on the backs of the labels. And that weren't like, again, that's why the perfume thing struck a chord with me because it was like, oh, there's like a real thing here that came from the 
plant like from the ground Mm -hmm. and then just growing up you know you're reading all this stuff in the back of the bottle you have no clue what it was and that was like every beauty care product so it was kind of normalized that there's just weird words right (laughs) back of the label right but then I was like really connecting it to things that came out of the planet and then just seeing what I thought was green at the time the body shop it's just like wasn't when I looked at the labels you look at the title and it's okay like fuzzy peach bath oil, you look on the back, there's no peach, you know, right. You know, the dewberry, there's no plant that's a dewberry. So but that was an exciting moment, because I was just like, Oh, my God, like now I have an excuse (laughs) to make stuff because I was really getting into like making my food and, you know, making like soaking grains and making nut milks and sourdough bread like that was back in 1991. And then, uh, yeah, so then I was just excited to convert my kitchen into basically an apothecary and then to start making like lip balms and perfumes and things for waitress legs because a lot of us were waitressing or things for eczema. And it was like literally working and effective yeah. as I was making the products just for friends and family. And then I was like importing all these really beautiful, exotic, wild, like wild crafted and different ingredients because mm-hmm. they didn't exist in Canada. So I was doing mm-hmm. that as I was going through university Mm-hmm. And then also doing papers on like women's health and stuff like that. So I was able to kind of connect it all. And then um, just a few months after I graduated, I opened up North America's first full concept aromatherapy store back in 1992. And that's where I had oh, a lot of my wow. formulations. And wow. Stuff. Okay. Let's dive into this because, you know, I, I read in your bio, you're called a beauty philosopher, which I love that. <laughs> I, I so resonate with that in terms of health and fitness. It's just so, I'm always so deeply thinking about like, what is going on here? Like what, what's all this societal programming? And like, no, it's like so off. And like, and I too grew up as a little girl in nature, out in the woods, digging Mm -hmm. holes and playing in streams. So, you know, I, I think when you have that connection, you understand like you're our place in the planet, like our place with other humans. Like there's just, there's some sort of deeply connected thing that I don't think you can get any other way. And Mm -hmm. I, I want to dive into this with uh, kind of the societal programming, the Pepto-Bismol aspirin, you know, like the, you go to the pharmacy and you buy some random bottle of stuff that it just tells you what it does on the front and you don't know what's in it. And that's just how it works. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first time ever that I tried just using like olive oil or jojoba oil on my skin. And I was like, this is a million times better. This is a million times better than any moisturizer I have ever bought. And I, it was like that moment, the wool was pulled off. I'm like, this is total crap, you know? And I'm not saying there aren't some sort of, you know, things maybe, (laughs) (laughs) but for the most part, I was like, this is not only is it not necessary, not only is it bad for me, it's also less good. Than the yeah, natural. it's not even neutral. It's like literally creating negative impact on your cells. Yeah, which can I you talk like about get, that? Well, yes. I just I just feel like, you know, to me, I feel like beauty, like capital B sort of beauty, it's would be imp- it's impossible if we're caring for our bodies with petroleum and it's like 50 derivatives. Right. No cell in our body is like parched for that petroleum and mm-hmm. I just feel like, you know, health and beauty are so inextricably bound that like to even think about like sort of, you know, beauty past that sort of, you know, it's just going to be an impossible feat, so to speak, if Mm -hmm. we don't have cellular health, mitochondrial health, microbiome Mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm looking into caring for an area of the body, I usually like try and step back and be like, okay, let's take away the past 50 years, 100 years, and what we've been told on how to take care of the body or this aspect out of the body or the hair, or the nails or the teeth, whatever, even like something Mm -hmm. small, or like not small, Mm -hmm. but you know, like this the nails or whatever. And then, uh, you know, usually, if we get out of the way as humans, we can find out like how our bodies were so brilliantly designed. So let's tap into the system in the body that's already doing the work of it. Because I also like to find those pockets where there is no effort or the least amount of effort so that life isn't just a series of like so many appointments to maintain the body, but really always allowing like, how do we tap into the body taking care of itself? Yes. You're very holistic. That's for sure. I mean, that is the mentality, right? And it's really about, a lot of it is about removing roadblocks. Yes. Um, it, it's like, you know, people are like, oh, I have anxiety and I'm like, okay, well, 
you're drinking like three or four energy drinks a day and you're eating high fructose corn syrup, like nobody's business. And all of these things that are causing you're literally eating anxiety, like maybe you can <laughs> stop eating anxiety, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and I say that with compassion and love, yeah. but there's, the, and there's so much education needed. And that's why we do things like this, but uh, so much of health is, I, I feel, I guess, holistic health is understanding that the body is magnificent. The body is, will do every single thing that it possibly can to thrive. And if it's not thriving, I love your approach. It's step back and say, what do you need? Not, Oh, I hate mm -hmm. my face. I have acne. I hate myself. It's that's not it. Yeah, it's, not it's trying to tell you that it's suffering and that it needs mm -hmm. some help. And you're exactly right. The gut is hugely correlated with that. Um, you know, hormones, your liver, all of this. So I appreciate totally, you bringing yeah. this to to the beauty world. Um, in terms of like favorite, I can, I just kind of want to pick your brain, like in terms of like <laughs> your favorite, you know, you've ever since you were little, you've been like the tincture, you know, making all these little tinctures and can you highlight some of your favorites ingredients for, for, for women mm -hmm. or men too, men too. My, sorry sure, guys, you yeah. guys can. Yeah. So for, for skin, you know, in terms of nurturing, yeah, well, I love what you said about jojoba and olive oil, because that's those are actually two of my favorite oils. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yes, like while I've, you know, been concocting for for decades and and just I love making the formulas and living libations, we just have like such a beautiful array and kind of got every angle covered. But that yeah. being said, I like to also just let people know that like those two ingredients, like or a, or a bottle of organic jojoba or a beautiful mm -hmm. bottle of organic olive oil will literally take you like, you yeah. know, you can buy big ones too, will last you like the whole year for if you're washing your yeah. face with that. And so just those two ingredients, like either one or the other, or you can combine them before we even get into fancy like botanical extracts or essential oils. Yeah. If you literally just stopped buying the drugstore, the beauty counter stuff, and you just wash your your face with jojoba or olive oil for the rest of your life, your skin would literally be like a thousand times better off than that I, vicious I can vouch cycle for that. we put it through, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's when I was looking at how, well, how did we use to wash the face? So that's mm -hmm. how I discovered um, mm -hmm. just the ancient practice of using oil to care for the skin. Mm -hmm. And so we have mm -hmm. um, this line we call best, the best skin ever. And so we've got, you know, sea buckthorn best skin ever, rose best, best skin ever, sandalwood mm -hmm. best skin ever, frankincense best skin ever. They're all different. Um, some are, you know, men and women can both use it. It's like kind of the one bottle to do it all. But it mm -hmm. came out of the, looking at the way ancient cultures, like it's a bit, you know, cross-cultural. You've got like the gua sha use with oil in mm -hmm. um, ancient tr Chinese culture. You've got the, the mm -hmm. use of the striegel, which is like another, it's like a gua sha, but just made out of metal. Um, mm -hmm. And it's scraping, which is a bit of a harsh word, but it's more like, like if you took the back of a butter knife. And you're mm -hmm. oiling the skin and then taking that gua sha mm -hmm. or a mm -hmm. bone in some cultures, mm -hmm. you know, obviously sanded down or uh, metal. And you're scraping that oil off the skin once you put it mm -hmm. in. And so we can do that, too, with um, washing our face mm -hmm. with oil, then using a, a cloth or a mm -hmm. cotton pad. And then that level of just that terry cloth, like we have organic hemp cloth. So just that like a classic face yeah. cloth texture. That's enough exfoliation like that's enough texture you use that with the oil uh, lift that. off dirt because oil just has a way of attracting that uh attracting the dirt out of the pores hmm. and then it doesn't like jojoba is the most simpatico with our skin sebum it's the most out of any oil mm -hmm. on the planet mm -hmm. and as gross as it sounds we actually want to let the bacteria be our beautician so in yeah. our sort of modern skincare, it's a bit of this scorched earth policy, just yes. like we've been growing our foods yeah. or kind of our health where we're just like, okay, you know, it's this germ warfare theory. But what we didn't know until, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, like just, um, and of course, 20 years ago is very new, but is the microbiome, yeah. which is essential. So we've got this gut microbiome, but there's one on top of it, like the skin's microbiome. Yes. And so the oil just doesn't disrupt that. And it allows, you know, the seat, we do need, mm. we need the bacteria, the good bacteria to eat some of the seed, but we need, you know, we can't just be so over exfoliated that we've got the young yes. cells underneath. Cause if we bring those to the top layer too soon, it's like too vulnerable right. and it's just you know, creating premature aging. So that goes back to like, I love those two oils. And then some mm. of my favorite ones are like frankincense, mm. um, 
rose, immortel, and mm. just eat, like even peppermint is so handy. Hmm. It's like portable ice in a sense. Like it's just yeah. one drop can calm and, and can really cool the skin that, you, yeah. you know, an area where you may have needed ice, like a burn or a bite, like a mosquito bite. It will just like mm, you know, one drop, no itch. Yeah. Or I after that. I gave birth. I made a bomb with peppermint right away because they were like, oh, oh wow. yeah, like, because, you know, just talking about your first yeah. urination. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I want to experience that. So just like, you know, now we have this product called, you know, Yoni, Yoni Soothing Serum. It's for like right after birth. Oh, wow. Um, which has got a lot that. of beautiful, like calming Smart. oils in there, like tans, blue tansy, yarrow and oh, peppermint. Beautiful. It just calms, cools the area and you can go to the bathroom without yeah. I, I love because <laughs> they were that. like That's you know like, and then use ice and stuff so we just use that right. you know, like walk around with ice that kind of thing you know wow yeah, yeah. that's really smart and I love what you're saying about the microbiome of the skin and it's the running joke in my family because you know with all the stuff happening in the world yes. last few years at my kids school it's just like sanitizer mania and I yeah. they know I'm like what do you tell your teacher what do you tell your teacher I ask her if I can just wash my hands. Yes. <laughs> nice, <laughs> like, nice. I don't want you, you like no. disrupting the microbiome of your no. skin like that constantly, you know? Well, they I just took triclosan, like- not just, but I don't know. When the past couple of years, they did take triclosan out of hand sanitizer mm. um, because it's this, it's sort of like an antibiotic, not quite, but it's just very right, disruptive right. to aquatic ecosystems, which we oh, really are wow. an aquatic e- ecosystem, but it's still in toothpaste. Oh, wow. Still in toothpaste. Wow. We actually, yeah. we do make a hand sanitizer and of course it's like real ingredients and a beautiful biodynamic, um, grape seed, uh, perfumer. Like it's like a very mm. high quality alcohol. It's not a synthetic alcohol mm. and we use it with essential oils. So it doesn't disrupt the microbiome. Oh, nice. So okay. Get, yeah. That, Cause it's sometimes, you know, you can't enough. wash your hands. Right. You're out and the about spray. Yeah. Right. So okay. Have that. We I make definitely. that for it for a long time. Okay. I will definitely pick up some of that. Thanks for that. Yeah. And I love what you're saying also about, (laughs) it's about, um, working together with nature, not yeah. fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, yeah. you know, and I just have to share. Cause the timing is so funny. My friend texted me right before we got on yeah. and you know, she's out, she's out in LA and she's like, Oh my gosh, the most horrible thing just happened to me. She's like, I was walking down the street, walking my dog and these, I sneezed and these two women were like, Oh my gosh, she sneezed. Go, 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 go. Oh and I just started laughing. Like I get it, but I was like, it just makes me giggle because with every breath, literally I pulled it up to send it to her. I'll, I'll share it here. It says human, this is from a study, um, on average humans breathe in a hundred thousand to 1 million microorganisms belonging to over 1000 different types a day. And then wow. our skin, think of it like we are yeah, our skin, you know, everything just- in the body respires. There's sort of like a breathing system to it all. And there's a breathing system even to the planet right like everything yes. alive is breathing yeah you're that's reminding how we work me together i saw like early early on in the situation and it's like it was like coming up to spring and it said oh allergy season is going to be like the salem witch trials yeah exactly right? exactly yeah. you know and i get it there's a time and a place you know you're getting mm-hmm. surgery we want the sterile like i get that but for yeah. the most part like you know i'm i'm more in your field of camp where i go in the mountains and i'm like rubbing dirt on me and i'm hoping to breathe in some more fungi and <laughs> diversify my immune response and all of that so um okay uh thank you for so much for sharing all that and i'll make sure that we link up your website because i know a lot of my people are going to be like and i i also your team sent me some of your serum and it, it was glorious. Oh, it's, oh. it's gone. I need to get more and I'm going to get some of your sanitizer, you know, healthier version as well. So thank you. It's glorious. Glor- I mean, not surprising. Like you've been doing this your whole life. So <laughs> well, also like, I just want the best, you know, for me and my body yeah. and that's what we're making here. So, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I thank you for sharing that about jojoba. The way jojoba came to me was I was literally out in the desert in deep meditation yeah. and Joshua tree. Oh, and I, I kept love- seeing this yeah. bush and I just had this really intuitive, like, you need to know what that is, you know? And I was like, I'm being so weird. And so I put it on my Instagram story and I was like, does anybody know what this bush is? And a bunch of people were like, that's jojoba. And I was like, well, that's interesting. I'll just follow my little intuitive gingerbread crumb thing. And so I looked it up and I found out that it's like you said, it's like the most similar to the sebum of our skin. And really, so I ordered some. And so that's what I've been using. So thank you for sharing that with me. It's one of your favorites. It's a desert plant, right? So it has, it's very Mm. tenacious against the weather. Mm. 
And mm. it also, because oils can go rancid, right? Like over time. Uh huh. And jojoba, if stored properly, is it's actually a liquid wax, and it ne- well, it it, wow. it can store properly for a hundred years. Wow. Yeah, it's an incredible plant because also we don't want to put things that are rancid on our body, right? Because then you're we're bringing free radicals right. into the situation. So of course, there's like you know not wanting to use like um, the oils of you know, the seed, the seed, oil, like mazola, canola, soy, yeah. which are in a lot of cosmetics. But in the natural realm, we don't want to use things like almond, peach, kernel, grape seed. The processing mm. is usually an issue that almonds usually not a hundred, hundred percent. And they go go rancid it. so quickly that by mm. the time it's in your home, it's going to be rancid. Okay. So almond and grape seed, highly likely to be rancid. So, yeah. And just not, okay. and not good for the skin and peach kernel. Not so great. Journal. Okay. Thanks yeah. for that. Good to know. Um, okay. Let's talk about, you have a book called holistic dental care. Can we dive into that yeah, a little bit? Totally. Okay. <laughs> Enlighten us. You know, why did you write this book and what do we need to know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I wrote that actually first. Cause I just found there was such a huge gap. Um, especially, you know, in the beginning I was talking about figuring out all those things for like the sort of minor little ailments that can go on with the body. But I found there was a huge gap in caring for the teeth. And I feel like, you know, I kind of just had a classic North American dental childhood experience, right? you know, sort of normal couple cavities, some braces for a year, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But it's like all that, like the whole thing was off. You know what I mean? So like most adults now we kind of have to clean up the past. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So I found that there was a huge gap because like, so we get to the dentist and you're just kind of like in trouble or something, right. Or not, or you just, it's not that fun. But meanwhile, it just felt like what you're doing at home, like, it's just like, yeah, go home with your crest and good luck and we'll see you in six months or whatever. Right, right. right. So it was like, well, what, you know, what do we got to do to really keep that in balance on a day-to-day level? And um, I did happen to see a holistic dentist when I was like 23. She wasn't that holistic, but the hygienist was. And there was the beginning of a cavity and she's like, go home, make your, you know, make the whatever, make something with all your botanicals. And then we'll check the cavity in about six months and see if it's like um, reversed and stuff. And I was just like, what? Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. I thought it was just like, you know, beginning of a cavity. And then like, basically that's a slippery slope to a filling. And uh, so I did that. That's what created the happy gum drops, which I created this dental Mm -hmm. serum which mm. has got uh, good vulnerary oils in it for like healing the gums, keeping mm. the bacteria balance in the mouth, um, preventing wow. bleeding gums, stopping bleeding gums. And then it, mm. it did heal the beginning of that cavity. So it was fascinating to see and to get an oh. x-ray of and to just be like, what? Um, and of course, within holistic dentistry, it's sort of like saying, yeah, hey, the teeth are connected to the rest of the body. Yeah. And because they are. And yes they're also what I learned, they're alive, you know, just like our bones. Yes. You know, we're grown adults now, but they're alive and the Mm -hmm. density can, you know, can, can go, but it's also a dynamic thing. Like you can get that back. Right. If, and so our teeth are alive, they're connected to the rest of their body, our body. And especially with the roots that draw in blood, And then um, through my research, which is really just bringing together the research Mm -hmm. of other dentists, Mm -hmm. of course, um, I discovered this one dentist who started in the 50s, just trying to figure out like, you know, is this systemic? Are they connected? Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. So through thousands of studies that he did at Loma Linda University, he discovered that, yes, indeed, there is a dentineal lymphatic system. So there is a dent, like a dental dent, like a, a tooth lymph wow. system. Every tooth wow. has lymphatic fluid wow. in it, which is amazing and really yeah. makes a lot of sense. So again, when I was right. thinking about how do we take care of the body or the teeth, we weren't born with a toothbrush in our hand. So what are the natural body systems right. that are helping to prevent decay? Let's like right. tap into that first. Yes. And this is kind of that holy grail where mm. we find out, I call it the invisible toothbrush. And so the, the mm. dentineal lymphatic system to me is like this invisible toothbrush because it, wow. it buffers against cavities and it has a way of cleansing the teeth inside wow. and out. And so wow. what happens is when we're chewing, hopefully we've got nutrients in that food. It's not like Fruit Loops. And mm. then those chemical messengers, uh, they're re, uh, the parotid glands in the mouth carry the messages 
to the hypothalamus, the nutrient messengers. And then that sends a cascade of action, which basically, obviously, when we're eating, we're creating blood, like the blood then gets the nutrients from the food, and then brings that throughout the body. So then what happens after we eat about an hour after we eat, then the blood travels to the tooth where the roots of the tooth draw up and inwards this the blood. And then it's sort of like a centrifugal wow. action. It's inwards and upwards, spiraling inwards and upwards. It goes into the pulp chamber. And in the pulp chamber, the blood is fenestrated into uh, this clear lymphatic li liquid that get, then gets pumped out with the odontoblasts, which are kind of like bone piston pumps <laughs> that wow. send out this fluid, the lymphatic fluid onto the surface of the teeth, like this sort of microscopic sweat that then mm. coalesces with the saliva to wow. you know buffer against the cavities protect and if there's even an, a weaker spot in the in the in the mouth that will go to that area kind of like sap in a tree mm. protecting it yeah and delivering the nutrients and so when we're stressed or not eating nutrient rich or like having spiked blood sugar levels or like a pregnancy mm. or a teen hormone time or mm -hmm. like just literally eating mm -hmm. you know junk food um, then the system stagnates and then nutrients aren't brought to the tooth. So that's the first phase. If that continues, then what happens is this dentina lymph system doesn't just stagnate, but it reverses. So then the tooth becomes almost like this straw that then sucks in from the mouth into the tooth wow. rather than this fluid up and out from the tooth. Wow. And then when we're sucking in from the tooth, which is this, you know, zone of virus and bacteria and that kind of stuff. So then we're drawing that into the tooth. And then that is actually how a cavity is formed. That's the genesis of creating a cavity wow. is that reversal of the dentineal lymph fluid system. Wow. Cause it's like, I'm not getting what I need. So I guess I'll come out here and see if I can get it here, but isn't then it's yeah, not, it's not it getting needs. it there either. Kind of like wow. even, you know, when we're not getting enough minerals, the blood right. will say, you know what, bone, I'm going to just exactly. um, take it for now. And then you'll deal with it 40 years right. later or whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. It makes yeah. so much sense. Thank you for explaining that so beautifully. And I love I, I, listening to you. I'm like, oh, you're like, you're like this, like, um, what would I call it? Like little in inventor, I I I explorer of tinctures. Like it's, it's beautiful. And you're helping out like the microbiome in the mouth and also the skin. And it's, it's beautiful. I see what you're trying. You're like, why would we need all these weird interventions? You know, the body is intelligent. So like what is going on and how do we support the body and being what it was able to do? And on that note, like, have you, I don't know if you've ever um, come across Dr. Nathan Bryan. He's a PhD yeah. researcher on nitric oxide. He's oh, going to cool. be coming on the show. He's amazing. Right. And so a big part of his message is do not use mouthwash, right? Because it destroys yeah. the, the microbiome, the oral microbiome. And they, yeah, he, I mean, he's, this, he's published in nature. He is like a very oh, cool. accomplished researcher and he, they did a study where they, sh they took like a 20 something year old, really healthy guy yeah. disrupted his oral microbiome yeah. and he went clinically hypertensive during that time. And then they, by re just restoring the microbiome to a healthy balance in his mouth, wow. his blood pressure went back to normal. And wow. if you don't have that, that I mean, it makes sense. And wow. Yeah. If you don't have that healthy oral microbiome, then like you can't make not nitric oxide correctly, even so yes. when you eat nitrates and nitrites and, and your vegetables and your plants, your leafy greens and all these things, if you don't have a healthy microbiome in your mouth, you can't convert that. And it's crazy. I mean, just, sorry, I'm ranting a little bit, no, but it's I just love so that. cool to learn yeah. about is, is yeah. that like the, your hemoglobin, like you can't give off oxygen in your blood if you don't have nitric oxide correctly. Right. So this, but it all right. starts in the mouth. So, so much yeah. of his messaging, and he has so much cool data about nitric oxide and how important it is and the plants and the soils and where it's coming from in the earth and all of this stuff. But the point is, if your microbiome isn't healthy in your mouth, it, even if you're eating it, it's not going to work well. Right. So I was just like, that thank totally you. Sense. Thank yeah. you for like, you know, showing up in that, in that area. Right. It's a really yeah. important thing. And we still and have people. Mouth, oh, go ahead. I was going to say they have some, so the mouthwashes are synthetic alcohol as well, which is just like a whole other creature. Right. And back when I was like, in, I mean, this is like 2010, the re, the re, so I'm sure it's gone up. You can Google, but synthetic, those mouth, the classic 
drugstore mouthwashes create over 36,000 cases of oral cancer a year. Wow. Yeah. I can't and believe they're legal. Not to mention all the I other know, stuff that we just talked so about. Crazy. And I really feel like, yes, yeah, because it's messing with the microbiome. Yes. Because 100%. what we did, again, we didn't know. We were like, kill the germs, kill the pathogens. Right. We didn't realize there was a whole world of beneficial bacteria that is right. literally as crucial as our cells. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just, it- you know, billions of cells, billions of bacteria. We're basically just a host to a mm-hmm. bacterial banquet. Yeah, And we've got to be a good host to have like, you know, we don't want to have a pathogen party. And to do that, we can't just be scorch earthing right. our bodies in the name of our beauty care or our oral care or health care mm-hmm. by like clean cropping the beneficial right. bacteria. And even nutritional habits. Like yes. I I'm really deep into the gut microbiome right now. What is definitely <laughs> like my favorite area. I'm probably spending at least 10 hours, at least 10 hours a week researching gut right bacteria. On. I'm very obsessed. I'll put it that way. And, Have you gone into um, butyrate? Yes. 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 And it, it's and so, short, butyrate, so the short chain fatty acids are right. Yeah, this, it's so amazing. The butyrates, which is yes. really like a postbiotic in that like there's prebiotics, which will feed the bacteria, then the probiotic, which we all know about. But really, I think the secret sauce is in the prebiotics and the postbiotics. Yeah. And, and, and to your point about this, like scorched earth thing, what I found in, in looking at gut testing, stool analysis of clients who have been in dietary extremes is I get it. Maybe they did some sort of dietary extreme uh, of super elimination thing because they had an overgrowth. I understand. But what I also find is they are like there's either none detected in their sample or so low that it just wasn't in that sample of tons of crucial beneficial bacteria. Right. right? So we're in this kind of like antibiotic. Oh yeah. We're getting some extinct species of overall in life. Yeah. And it's like, you've got, we've got to feed the good guys. We've got to feed the good guys, you know, and, and it shows, it shows in their health. They're not able to digest well. They've got mental stuff, mental, you know, like mental health type, like depressive, anxious type things going on. Um, they're, you know, not able to lose weight, metabolism suffering. And, and it just all goes back to this, you know, it kind of goes back to me for like the jojoba thing. It's like, it's like working together, like embracing bacteria, like, uh, the overall health of the system, kind of like you were talking about with the teeth. It's like, if we could get away from the, like, everything's hurting me, run, 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 uh, and look at like, what does nature provide? And how do I integrate with that? How do I, you know, honor that? So it's almost like regenerative agriculture in your own body. Yeah, you know, it's totally. like, how do I, yes. how do I support nature? How do yes. I embrace it? How do I learn what, from it? How do <laughs> in beauty, the sort of main thesis of the book is that to revive our being and to tap into our bodies we mm-hmm. need to engage with the elements. Yeah, that's our yes. that's our pot of cream, basically. The mm-hmm. sun, the mm-hmm. gifts of the earth, like good food, the guts, you know, clay, mm-hmm. I love and then it. pure water. You know, you know, right? It, like you know, having a shower, filter, whatever you need at home. You know, bathing in lakes or oceans, and then right. and then tapping in also to air, getting fresh air. Yes. You know, air bathing sun bathing, moon yes. bathing, earth yes. bathing, forest bathing, yes. all that good stuff. Oh, I love you, girl. You're soul sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh man. Okay. Well, I think we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Guys, if you want to check out Nadine, all of the stuff, livinglibations.com is probably the best place for them to go for everything. Correct. Yeah. And we're really like, you know, you know, we really email us any question you have, like, well, you know, Mm -hmm. health, oral beauty. We also do free Mm -hmm. consultations. It's a little booked in advance, but it's just like, uh, like a beautiful half hour with like our educated people. That's so awesome that you guys Oh, that is amazing that you do that. And on well, Instagram, just like things that we like to bring depth to things, you know, cause it's yeah. just like such a beautiful banquet that like, oh. yeah. Yeah. You care. It shows, <laughs> um, living libations official is the Instagram account where you can fo- also follow Nadine at Nadine Artemis official. We'll link all that up. We'll link your books in the show notes. And Nadine, thank you for being such a, like, I, I, I feel your journey, this little girl <laughs> playing in nature, kind of getting into like, what's all this. And like following the curiosity of your soul and like continuing to show up with that and, and lead like, I really appreciate it. It's seen it's appreciated. And thank you for coming on and sharing with my thank audience you. today. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. It's my pleasure.